G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem on this channel. You'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear. You'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes. You'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture. You'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyze historical events, what happened, who were the key players, and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you and you might want to consider subscribing. In this video guys, we're going to make a Dark Age inspired medieval belt pouch. Don't ever be afraid to keep scraps of leather, they're always very useful for using on um, like if you're going to practice doing some tooling or whatever, perhaps they might be useful for doing buckles, that kind of stuff. I use a nice clean fresh blade on every single project that I do, they don't cost much. I think these knife blades are like, I don't know, 50 cents each or something. Always be very careful where your thing, fingers and thumbs are in relation to the blade and make sure you've got good knife control. Um, that can end really badly if you're not careful. I've been there many times myself. Uh, and I've seen it more than enough times. Um, I am trying to get patterns put together for my projects. So I have a whole range of projects for those of you who are interested in from costuming through to furniture and a whole bunch of different leather projects. So if any of you are interested in purchasing some reasonably inexpensive uh, patterns and so on, then um, I'm trying to get them up onto an Etsy store. You will find us, just do a search, I think for Medieval Mayhem, that should come up. What we should end up with is something that's going to look a whole lot like this. We have two straps that are connect the pouch to the belt. We have the front of the pouch, and we have the back of the pouch and the flap, and we have the sides. All right, don't get too concerned. We've got a few markings on this. This is um, leather, which unfortunately has been lying around for a couple of days, um, and I think this just picked up a bit of a few marks from the kids, but that's no big deal. Alrighty, let's go. Okay, I'm going to put a few things to one side because that's going to take a little bit more work. Right now I'm going to focus on the uh, these pieces pretty much in this order. Right, so front pouch. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a leather beveler and what that is doing is just smoothing off the edges and just giving you a nice finish. I realize some people might say, you know, some of this is a bit OCD or whatever. Uh, I like to try and just give my projects a nice finish. It just shows a little bit of passion and the uh, level of, um, I guess, the, the leather level of um, enthusiasm I have for my work. I really do enjoy it. Alrighty, so we have some nice edges. Let's just uh, quickly go through these. Um, these leather bevelers don't cost much. You are looking at probably 
from it now. Eight dollars or something delivered if that. Um, it's really not that big a deal. Sometimes you might pay a bit more um, from the online stores. Uh, which obviously taking longer to get delivered at the moment with uh, everything the way it is. But that's alright. Um, I guess that's just the world that we live in. So as a guide, you'd be looking at approximately 35 by 45 centimeters worth of leather here. Uh, this is three millimeter leather. It's probably a little bit thick for what it needs to be. You could probably get away with um, two and a half or maybe two millimeters. That's probably going a bit light. Um, however, you can contact uh, artisan, other other leather artisans or um, some of the leather craft workers and or even some of the leather stores. There's, there's plenty of those still around. There are obviously a lot closing. However, um, it's not too hard to get hold of leather and, and for a, a, a relatively small investment you can end up being able to create a lot of cool stuff yourself and it doesn't take a massive amount of skill. Alrighty, so we've now bevel uh, done the edge beveling on the straps, the side and the front. We're just going to leave that to one side. Now what we're going to do is called um, stitch grooving. Alrighty. I appreciate, um, I appreciate this may not be as historically accurate as perhaps some people in the reenactment circles would desire. Um, I prefer stitch grooving because it um, it means that your stitches are below the surface of the leather and therefore the product is going to last a bit longer and if you're going to put a bit of effort in then seriously why not um, alright so it's a very simple process uh, I'm locking mine off uh, let me see approximately five millimeters which is just over um, one sixth of an inch, I think. Uh, I'm not very good at imperial measurements. I'm, I'm someone who was brought up in the world of, of metric. The other thing that you can do with a stitch groove, or the other thing that it allows you to do, is that it allows you to keep your stitches a consistent distance from the side, and so you end up with a um, Oh, I think anyway, uh, a much nicer finish. Alright, um, okay. Just while I got my stitch groove out, we may as well do the, um, the rear and the flap as well. Uh, we're just using a 4-in-1 punch now. Uh, I prefer these types of um, hole punches to the four, uh, to the uh, the diamond versions. Uh, I think that's probably just personal preference. Right, uh, the die that I use is from Maclace Leather. Yes, this is a modern die. Um, and I do try very hard to keep most of my stuff fairly authentic. Um, that said, uh, the tools that we have these days in the modern world are really about, uh, I guess, partly convenience, really. Um, and I'm sure if these tools did exist a thousand years ago, people would have been using them. So uh, I'm not overly fussed about using it, and I don't really see how... Um, using a modern die necessarily detracts from the product. Alrighty, let's go. So I'm going to keep the back and the flap of the pouch to one side because we'll come back to that. Um, right now, however, we're just going to get some dye onto. You can use multiple coats of dye if that's your thing. You want to necessarily get a darker outcome. Um, I don't necessarily see that that's. Uh, 
necessary with this one. I do like this particular die, the, the Maclay stuff, um, and I find their people very easy to work with. Uh, they're very knowledgeable and they're very, uh, very professional. Alrighty, so I'll leave their contact details, by the way, in the comments below, or rather in the description of the video. couple of things to be aware of in terms of using leather dyes. Uh, leather dye can be affected by the humidity in the ambient environment. Uh, you also want to be conscious that uh, to use what they call a sealer, essentially a lacquer, uh, just to protect it from UV light and rain, that kind of stuff. Um, already Lastly, I would say in terms of dyeing, then uh, it's worth considering uh, using a, um, a sponge to apply some water to the, to the area first. I don't think that's necessary all the time, but um, it, it can be useful. Alrighty, the, uh, the, the, the sealer that I used, I just spoke about this a moment ago, uh, this is the, the Maclay Clear Sealer. Uh, not very expensive, I think it's um, a few dollars. Alrighty. We're going to leave this to dry in just a moment. The next process that I do is called uh, burnishing. What we do is we apply uh, some beeswax down the side of the of the leather. Now I understand a lot of people are going to say, well hey, you know, that's a bit extreme, isn't it? But it is these one percenters that really do show off your uh, pride and passion for um, what it is we're making. It doesn't take very long and let's face it, beeswax is not very expensive. You can get a burnishing tool. Um, as in an electric one, uh, I believe Tandy sells them. Um, I don't personally rate them, um, certainly not for something that, at, at my level, I should say. Um, I think they're probably great for what they are, but um, I don't do leather projects every day. Um, my organisation doesn't do leather projects every day, so it's uh, not something that we're over fussed about here. Getting a really nice dark brown finish coming out here. Really thinking this is looking pretty good now. As you can see, this does not take long to do. Uh, and it's not that much of an expensive project. So as I said, 35 by 45 centimeters roughly. What's that? 16 by 14 inches of three millimeter or seven or eight ounce veggie tan leather. Um, I don't know, you might pay $15 for that or something like that. It's not much. Add to that uh, some tools. You know, it doesn't cost that much money. And you can come out with some really nice, customised, personalised, uh, you know, projects which, which really embellish you as an individual, as a human being. But not only that, but really brings out the character that you want to reenact, whether it's a, a true-to-life character or whether you're in a group which does more sort of fantasy-based, uh, whatever it might be. Um, that's it. So uh, to start off our stitching, we're going to wrap the thread around your finger like once or twice. And then just roll down very gently. This was an old technique taught to me by my mum. Alright, 
then just pull that and you'll end up with a pretty decent knot. Uh, this is waxed linen threaded so it will melt and that's the whole purpose of what I'm doing. Alright, now I go back slightly two or three stitch lengths. Now I know some people use stitching ponies and two needles and all kinds of weird funky stuff. Um, I'm not that guy. What I do is I stitch one direction, just a basic continuous stitching method. Nothing fancy, nothing whatever. And I then will come back the other way. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. What I do find is that you have to do this reasonably promptly, otherwise you know, the leather can change. So leather being um, a hydroscopic material, what I mean by that is it because it absorbs moisture, um, it can and will change shape on you. And um, usually in ways you don't want it to sometimes. Um, so because I put, you know, dye on there and we're in a reasonably humid day here in Brisbane, Australia, um, the, yeah, the, the leather can change shape. So to avoid that, um, I like to go on with my projects and try and finish just in one continuous thing, really. Now we've stitched around one side, as you can see. There we go. Now what we're going to do is be stitch back in the other direction. That'll give us a perfect uh, set of stitching. Alrighty. And so what you should end up with is something that's going to look like this. Nice, long, continuous stitch. This has gone obviously back and forth, as I've explained. And what that does is it... This is going to create such an incredibly strong, long-lasting bond. I'm really super happy with it. Alrighty guys, so that's, um, that's stitching leather. Alright, now what I'm going to do is just add a toggle. Uh, pretty much the same process as stitching. Uh, I got this really nice toggle uh, online. And we're just going to stitch that in place relatively loosely. I mean, you just want to go through like, um, I don't know, five or six times maybe. It doesn't even really need to be that. Um, so this is the same thread that I was using for stitching the sides. This is a waxed linen thread. Um, really nice and, and robust. Doesn't cost much at all. Uh, and I'm just going to tie this off with a reef knot. So we now have the um, back and flap of the pouch. And uh, I've obviously just gone through, I've done the stitch grooving, I've put holes in. This is where the, uh, the two belt straps are going to go. Now I'm going to do some tooling. I realise this is not historically accurate necessarily um, in the context that I'm doing it, but it was done. So we know that medieval belt pouches uh, were tooled. There's finds on the Mary Rose to confirm that. The Mary Rose being fairly famous uh, sort of uh, Tudor period, I guess, um, shipwreck. Although that's after the medieval period, it, um, it's very consistent with what we do know about um, the medieval period when people would have been basically decorating everything. Okay, so my patch is going to have a small symbol on the front which I'm going to paint. I'm going to use acrylic paints. I realize that itself as well is not uh, historically accurate, but it's something that I'm going to do for me. So uh, for those people who are, um, I guess, purists on the uh, medieval side of things, you know what, um, that's okay. You don't have to do this. No one's telling you to do this. This is just what I'm doing with my pouch and it's up to you uh, if you were to do this project on how you want to do it. Again, we just wet the leather down 
doesn't need to be crazy wet or anything, but it needs to be moist. Now I'm using this symbol here, which I'm going to line up. Here we go. Now um, this is going to be a decorated crucifix. All I've done is just um, utilize one of the craft aid patterns which I purchased earlier. When you're tooling leather, you need the leather, as I've said earlier, to be um, relatively moist but not overly wet, uh, which is a little difficult to achieve sometimes. It's um, unusually warm here in uh, Brisbane, Australia for this time of year and very humid. Um, uh, but that's that's okay. That's what it is. I'm using what they call a stylus. A stylus is essentially a blunt instrument, and what that's allowing me to do is transfer the image to the leather. With the leather being moist, it's uh, I guess accepting the impression which is created by the stylus as I go over it. So I'm not using a crazy amount of pressure, but I am using some pressure. Uh, all right. uh, one thing someone just told me just recently was if you are unable to complete your tooling project in one go, for whatever reason, then um, what you can do is just put it into a Ziploc bag now I've never done this myself, I'm only going basically on what I'm told, but I'm told that uh, that can ruin your leather work if you do it too much. So my advice to you would be um, probably not more than you need to do it. But as I say, I'm only really going off what I've been told. I'm using what they call a swivel knife here, and uh, I, I don't know if it's necessarily, you can necessarily call it a knife. Um, it's not overly sharp sharp, um, if that makes any sense at all. It's um, simply designed to Take the impression that you've created on the leather and I guess um, score the leather is the right word a bit more firmly so that the um, image comes through. Alrighty, a couple of tips here for painting leather. Right here. So we're using uh, a half decent quality um, acrylic. This is by a company called Tamiya. I've been using their paint since I was a very little kid. And my advice is to keep the leather relatively moist as you're working it. Uh, having a bit of access to some uh, acrylic paints is, is, I find, quite a good thing. Um, there's a times and plug, you know, when you need to um, touch up some dyeing or whatever that you might have done and maybe it didn't go out quite as well as you'd hoped. Alright, so... I do actually wonder, and maybe some people could give me a comment below, whether or not these sorts of colours would have been achievable through the same kind of uh, dyeing processes and 
mixed colored processes that monks used for um, ink and illumination. Very, very, very interested to know. There are obviously people out there, I think, who know a bit more about some of that than I do. I would think it's possible, and I would also think that it's possible that um, some of this, you know, could be achieved that way. Let's get some dye on the same dye as before we're using the dark brown from uh, Maclay's leather. So now we're just going to go over with some clear uh, varnish stuff. I believe this is the same as what my American and Canadian friends would call resist. Alright, now we're going to start stitching on uh, these belt straps. Uh, exact same process as before. Just stitch one direction and then go back the other way. Alrighty guys, so we're about done. I just finished off the stitching from the front to the rear. As you can see, we've got this really nice continuous stitching going on. It's worked out really, really, really well. So happy with this. This has come out really nice. Okay, I've used a, um, a small scrap of leather just to basically to be like a, a thong, I guess. Um, to attach into the buckle, uh, otherwise everything else has come out just really well. The straps are all good, I'm really happy with this. Detailing is excellent. So, alright guys, really interesting project to do. It'll take you an hour or so, uh, I think, to do that. Um, as I say, it'll pro it's probably worth around, what, I don't know, $40 tops in terms of tooling and materials and dyes. Obviously you don't use a whole bottle of dye each time, that kind of thing. So for those of you who are interested in making some of your own gear, um, this is a really good option to do. Alrighty guys, uh, all finished, all done. Really proud of this. Um, this has taken me uh, quite a bit longer than I first anticipated, but it's actually come out really, really well. Um, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, and I think it's, it's just come out really well. I'm, uh, a bit of effort's gone into that, um, but you know, something I'm going to have for quite a long time to come. This is really good quality materials, uh, and I think the um, the stitching should last pretty much, you know, for for ten years or more worth of reenactment events. Um, I do a lot of reenactment. I'm out most um, ordinarily. I'm out most months. Uh, so, uh, in terms of education at schools and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to getting back on the, on the road after the restrictions start to lift. Uh, there we go. Alrighty guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.